Hi, everybody. Will here with this week's interview chair right from Bogota, Colombia. This is Miss, Mrs. Dennis Jensen. Sit back and listen to Dennis for a while. Hi, everybody. Will here with this week's interview chair. We have Dennis Jansen from Bogota. How are you, Dennis? I'm fine, thanks, Will. How are you? It's good. It's been a long time since we've seen each other. So. Oh, yeah, it has. So you're three only... Three years. Oh, I'm sorry? At least three years. Yeah, at least, probably, yeah. So you're an Albury judge and you bred Danes, Labs, and Pointers. Right? Correct. I you Over... Pointers, so... Yeah, that's... Well, that's because... I only had really had pointers since I've been judging, maybe a couple of labs. Danes finished before I became an all breed judge. Oh, okay. okay. I love Danes as well. And, and I've had labs. I, I had a house dog that was a lab for years. So, all right, let's start. Tell me how you got started in this crazy sport of dogs and tell me how old you were as well, if you don't mind. I don't mind at all. I was about 31 when I bought my first pedigree registered Great Dane. I brought it in from England to Jamaica, which was quite a <laughs> an undertaking. Were and you living I, in I don't, time then? I was living in Jamaica. We lived in Jamaica for 10 years, from 69 to 79. Okay. Where were so, you born, Dennis? India. India? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. For some reason, I thought you were... Jansen, that's his married name then, right? That's my married name, yeah. yes. And my husband was German, not not um, not Swedish not or Swedish. Yeah, Scandinavian, as everybody thinks. That's They're what I thought. German. That's what I thought for sure. So yeah, no, he was a Janssen from Germany, but born and brought up in Peru. So I am all my kids are total crossbreeds, <laughs> designer dogs. <laughs> okay, sorry to interrupt you. Go back to the Great Dane to Jamaica. <laughs> Yes, so I'd always wanted to have a great day. We'd always had dogs. My parents had dogs in because I then grew up in British Guiana, as it was then. Yep. And the only dogs you could import into anywhere in the Caribbean really was um, were from England, from the UK. Uh, so we had dogs, but there was no cl kettle club in British Guiana. So there was no registration pro uh, process. So but we had cockers, English cockers, and we had a staffy also, all purebred, but not registered because there was nobody to register with. <laughs> yeah. So where did you go from the Dane then? Did, did you ever get the Dane to a dog show or? Yes, in Jamaica, I went to my first dog show. I remember it very clearly. Jane Kay was judging. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you got a little critique on each dog that was shown. I mean, there must have been a total of, what, 70, 80 dogs in the entire show. And I still have that critique. And it said, mm, pretty nice bitch all round, could have been better handled. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That was the start. And where did you go from there? I want to hear it. Well, then it, in 79, we, uh, my husband was posted here to uh, Columbia with General Electric. And uh, we arrived with a Great Dane and a, and a mutt, a crossbred between a German Shepherd Doberman cross. That was just a pet, but I adored her. And they were the greatest friend, these two, two bitches. And so a tremendous journey from Jamaica through Miami and down to Bogota in the most enormous kennel, which was home built that you've ever seen. <laughs> so it was quite a feat. And then I came here, registered her here with the local kennel club and um, started showing, I think, two months after I arrived. And you went from that. Yeah. So when did, when did, what was next? Was it labs or was it pointers? No, the labs after, uh, so when I think I got the first labs in, not till about 89, I, I did import one, two, three more Danes from Britain, 
okay. uh, to Colombia this time and continued with Danes. But it's a lot of dog and I had young kids and I wanted them to be able to show. They wanted a junior handle and Danes were really a bit too much mm-hmm. dog for them. <laughs> I mean, although they were gentle giants, they just could have, you know, if they wanted to go and say hello to somebody, there'd have been a child being pulled along behind the day to go. So I got two labs, two lab bitches from a local breeder who all his stock came in from mostly UK, some from the States, some pretty good kennels. And so I got two lab bitches and bred a few litters over the years. I wasn't really that into lab breeding, to be honest. Um, And so that was how it went. And then? And then pointers started in 1991, 92. Um, Again, I... I bought a bitch locally who was from an, from an imported bitch. I fell in love with her and decided I really wanted a, a pointer puppy. So I was indulged and by myself. <laughs> and um, she sadly did so well in her first year, puppy of year and everything. And she died at the age of 13 months oh, no. of distemper, hard pad, fully vaccinated, everything. We'll never know why or how. And so I then wanted another point a bitch, and I brought one in uh, from Margetta Kettles, Margie Martorella mm-hmm. and Eileen Herman, who they were co-breeders, and I brought in a bitch, a liver and white bitch. And after a couple of a few years, I bred her to another imported dog from the from Herman Garcia, who was a well-known figure, judge, and breeder here. And he had an imported dog that I quite liked the look of and did well and had a very nice litter, rather a large litter, larger than I would have liked, um, but kept a bitch from that litter. And he kept, I, well, he took a dog and they both did extremely well. So I was very fortunate. They were both best in show winners and there were others in the litter who also did well. Now, are you still breeding? I'm not breeding at all. My last litter of any breed was nine and a half years ago. And then you get to an age and I don't know who would look after all my dogs or t- just take them. I mean, with if and when something happens to me and I don't think that's very responsible. Well, that makes sense, of course. When did you start judging then, Dennis? First of all, no, let's, go, let's skip that question. Who were your mentors? How did you get, who, who got you involved? It's very difficult to find mentors here in your breeds. And so I basically, Margie Martirella mentored me a lot in pointers, I must say. And, um, but here, for example, in Danes, there were two other Danes here at that stage, but they weren't breeders. They just had a Dane. They were not the kind of people that you could gain information from. So I would go to shows in the UK, sit beside people there and chat to them. And also a little bit in the States, but mostly in England. And I would talk, I bore them to tears with my questions, you know. And and then you learn from reading. I, we didn't have internet really back then, but you would, I'd buy books and, you know, you'd have much far more magazines back then and look at articles from over the years. But it was difficult to find mentors here for, for specific breeds, you know, that you were interested in. Well, Margie was definitely a good choice for pointers. So. Yes. Oh, yes. She's blunt. She tells the <laughs> truth. She holds a spade, a wretched shovel. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'll try we... not to swear. <laughs> <laughs> it's my show. We can do what we want. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, when did you start judging then? In the 90s, uh, uh, well, sort of 96, uh, 95, I I got two breeds, Labradors and Great Danes. There was no real system for, um, for the formation of judges at that stage. There were four all-breed judges in Colombia from the time I arrived, 79, until the time I started showing an interest in judging. And But there was no real system. You you ended up doing an anatomy 
uh, test, you know, and that sort of thing. And then, and then you had to go out and judge. And you had to do student judging. I know I did one of my first student judgings. Um, and, and they would come and watch you, or two of these four judges who were here would come and watch you, and they would criticize from what you wore to your rig procedure to your choices, um, which I couldn't quite understand, considering neither of them was a great Dane breeder. And there were, in labs, there was quite a depth of quality here, so that was much easier. Donald Sturz was one of my first judges I, um, I had to student judge under. I remember, and he was very good and very helpful. I also was the show director by that stage for the Kennel Club. So I had an awful lot of mentors and visiting judges who came here. I remember Donald Buxbaum in Danes, you know, we chatted oh, for yeah. hours. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. And um, there were just so many judges that I would sit and chat to. I'd have to take them out to, to lunch the day after the show. And I would just bend their ears, you know, and you just, you'd get so, Bobby, Bobby James from England, I've never talked to anybody or listened to somebody, to be honest. And you learn so much just from, just from listening and talking to these people. And so true. So, and, and then I, so I had the two breeds and then I moved on to the rest of the, um, the sporting group, I decided. And so I worked towards, at that stage, it was the AKC system here. And so it was the sporting group as, as you have it mm. also. And I worked, actually, Margie Martarella came down to judge and I, I ring stewarded and student judged under her. And then you had to judge three regional shows here, anywhere in the country. And, you know, you've got a, the whole variety and there were no points, so they let you do that. And then I worked towards the working group, obviously, my second um, choice. And eventually I was made an all breed judge from literally just being questioned on so many various standards and systems of judging. And now it's not like that anymore. Um, it's more difficult. It's um, almost ridiculously difficult. <laughs> uh, but, but there should be a happy medium. I agree. I agree. So when did so, you, you you became? What was your first venture over here for judging? Gosh, I I, remember, I wish you hadn't asked me that. But it was at <laughs> least it must be. 12, 15 years, 15 years ago, I think that Ed Wilde invited me to judge oh, okay. at the Kent Pedal Club. I believe, I think I've judged that at least three times and I was supposed to again last year. So it must be at least 15 years ago. And I think that was my first uh, assignment in Canada. What about my America? first assignment in the States was Initiation by Fire. It was oh. at the Santa Barbara Kennel Club. Oh, wow. <laughs> exactly. And I had to do Best in Show the first day, which is actually the easiest part. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and there was sitting there Michelle Billings, Betty Leninger. Um, gosh, I can't remember who, but I was sitting there and I, I, I was extremely nervous. Um, but as soon as you walk in the ring, you forget it. It was the night before that I was nearly ill. You know? <laughs> yes. So over the years, you, you've you've judged a lot of dogs. Without talking about dogs that are being shown at this time currently, is there some dogs that stuck in your mind that you you really enjoyed walking to your ring or wished you could have been a part of or enjoyed at a show? So. I think the dog that I've had my hands on, but not actually in the ring, was Mick. Yes. The Kerry Blue. He just made the very small amount of hairs I have on my arms stand straight up. You know, it was, he was, I don't know, there was just something about that dog. He was electric. He was just on his toes and um, just gorgeous. Yeah. I also very much like the Doberman I put up at that Santa Barbara show, uh, handled by Auntie, Andy Linton. I do not remember. Uh, I do not remember the dog's name, but she, it was a she, but a bitch. 
absolutely gorgeous. And he slipped in the best in show ring and fell. The dog stood beside, the bitch stood beside him. I mean, in a perfect, perfect pose and waited for him to get up and carry on. And that gave you goosebumps. <laughs> I bet it did. He's amazing. Yes. If you watch Andy Shalabri, he's amazing. He's a, he's, I'm yes. always just, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm out there and I see him, I stop and watch him. He just, yeah, he just has a... Was also, he was amazing. And there was also a Saluki at that show that I gave the breed to and was so looking forward to having him come back into the ring for the group. I didn't judge the group. He didn't come. He came second. Uh, but a, another dog that absolutely... Gave me goosebumps. There have been so many over the years in different parts of the world, I guess, that uh, that really, I don't know, makes it all, makes you so happy to be judging and makes you feel, I don't know, there's just a feeling when you see it, you see it come in in the class, in the breed, and you see it, so, you're so happy when it goes through and, you know, it's a good feeling. I'm sure. I'm sure. Looking forward to it. Uh, when I see dogs that just uh, end up being being put in the bank in my head, and I, I hope I see other ones like that at, at times. But oh yes, yeah, very mm-hmm. exciting. What are some of the what are, besides Santa Barbara, obviously? But some of, tell me some of your uh, assignments you've really enjoyed. I'm sure you enjoyed them all, but there's some that I'm sure stand out. Like stand out. I joined the. The Pointer National in California about nine, ten years ago. Well, that would have been good. And that was a tremendous honor, and I enjoyed it. Mm. I judged the Melbourne Royal, um, must be about eight years ago, and I did best in show or uh, general specials, as they call it down there. And I had a standard poodle, a black standard poodle, who was another another dog that stands out in my memory, but that was another great honor. Um, I'm trying to think. There have been so many shows in different areas, but those two probably stand out. I've also judged Pointer, I don't know if they call them nationals, but sort of two, one on the West Coast and one on the, and one outside Toronto. And that was, again, always judging your your breed or one of your breeds is a, is a great excitement. For sure. Of course, and I, I know you've been you haven't been judging a lot since since the pandemic. Um, have you got any trips planned here? Um, Not necessarily. Maybe Canada, but I've been. Canada. There's a few. Maybe next year um, to Canada, mm-hmm. and one in Colorado next year. But to be honest with you, not much else at the moment, and. That's fine. I mean, I, I'm enjoying being at home. I do get itchy feet, but then I just go on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What is, is there any advice you'd give um, aspiring judges? I. It's very difficult. I'm actually mentoring somebody here at the moment in the process of um, working towards being a judge. Mm-hmm. And I think just Never stop learning. Never feel you know it all because you don't. I mean, and I think that, I think that's probably it. I think too many, maybe some of the the, the newer, younger judges, they feel like they know it all. And you never know it all. Never. And I think that's probably a mistake. And Just try and get out and see as many dogs of the breed travel, go to seminars. We don't have many, almost none here. So get out, go to seminars when you can Um, or do online seminars. Yeah, they're very good right now. They're very, very good. And and do learn from it. I think that's probably, and don't be in a hurry to, Yeah. yeah. We get a lot of that. We get a lot of people on a rush to the end point so they can do everything. Yes, and I think it's so it's so easy to walk in a ring and look down a, a class of dogs and you immediately something usually catches your eye or immediately think, my goodness, nothing's caught my eye. Okay, <laughs> there are the two, exactly. Um, <laughs> but remember, everybody's paid their entry fee and they all deserve your time and, and, and don't have a... 
a sour look on your face as you go over a dog that you do not know is not going to win. <laughs> That's but the mask know, come in handy now. <laughs> yeah, be as courteous and as nice to that person who loves that dog dearly. And uh, anyway, I think that's it. Try and give everybody the respect they deserve. That's true. I think the sport has got enough sour faces without adding yours to the list. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. Uh, Jet, what do you think of the current judging process? Have you have you had much to do with it over here? I know I know you're 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 you've accomplished your already set us where you are. But have you have you watched the the current judging process over here and had any thoughts on it? Has it changed very recently? No, not really. Um, it's, it's just they ask for a lot, and it's it's. I always find that um, we 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 lose a lot of very good people that don't want to go through the process. Some very excellent dog people that mm-hmm. are afraid of the process more than anything else. They're afraid of. They've gone to a, a point in their life where they're afraid of taking tests and the time involved in getting there. And so I, it's become a, an arduous journey for some of them and some that just don't take it. I, I think we lose a lot of assets due to it. So I was just wondering on your thoughts on it. Um, I think I think the requirements for people who've been in breeds and know more than the rest of us forgotten about that particular breed or those particular breeds, I think they should have an easier pass to becoming judges of them of their breed Mm -hmm. and they should be concentrating on exams and and procedures in other breeds and not in their own breeds i don't know what it's like with you there but here it seems that you have to go through the same steps for your own breed that you could have been breeding for 20 30 years as you do for a new breed that suddenly appears or is suddenly accepted shall we say Um, and i think a little more common sense or a little bit more um, what's the word? I'm, I'm having trouble speaking any language at the moment. I think um, <laughs> a little more flexibility or understanding of what that person has in their past or known and shown and won should be taken a little bit into consideration. I mean, I know I have to take tests, for example, for the um, the breeds recognised in the states that are not recognised in the FCI. There are about 15 of them, Mm -hmm. and I've done the open book exams online and had to do those. Well, an open book exam is fairly, I think you should be able to pass those. Yeah, I think think the AKC and the CKC are are very good at education, and when they try try to to teach us the new breeds, and they're very good at their seminars and their questionnaires and I've really enjoyed the guy. I just wrote my first test last week. So, oh, yes? I, yeah, I did. So, um, but everybody's very helpful, I find, like I, I, on both sides of the border. So, they I think so. I, I, I think the open book exams, at least you do have to read the standard and read the standard and read the standard. And if you're clever, you'll then um, look for photos online if you haven't seen the breeds. I mean, because there's some breeds that you you wouldn't know otherwise. Oh, I know. And there's some breeds that I had to pass that I, to be honest with you, Dennis, I've never seen before in my life. I had to, I had to go on the internet and look at them to see what they would look like. So, <laughs> Absolutely. So, But you, we're so lucky today that you've got the internet and you can go online and, and look for illustrated standards if they exist yet. Yeah. But look for photos and look at videos of them, them moving and it's all available. I found the FCI website was very good at that. It, 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 the, the, the pictures and the breakdown and description. Right. Very, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that is good. When you're mm-hmm. not dealing with dogs, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? What do you do when you're not dealing with dogs in the dog world? Um, that's a very good question. I used to play golf, getting old and the body doesn't give up. I used to play bridge quite a lot. I have a fairly big house and garden, and I do have a veggie patch, which I enjoy. I do have a gardener, so I do the the, the picking part, you know. (laughs) (laughs) And um, I'm very, very lucky at that. I have two grandchildren here, three in Canada, two in the States. And so um, 
I do spend some Partially time. Canadian, then, really. So. <laughs> Free Canadians, yes, I do. And um, so it's a. So I, I, I enjoy family. I enjoy having friends around a bit. I read a lot. No, what Not you... really an awful lot more. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it that you're retired, basically, other than judging dogs. Here. The, the, um, what, what did you do? Did you do anything for a living or were you a mother? <laughs> I was a mother and then I did. I was very involved in the dog. In other words, the show organization. I was a show director for 11 years with the Kennel oh, wow. Club and then on the Labrador Club. That takes a hell of a that lot of time. You, There's no yeah. superintendents here, you know. Yeah. Um, and I started back when running a show meant everything was manual. You didn't just type in a in a registration number and the whole thing appeared and was put into the correct category. And, you know, you dealt with people's entries that, oh, God, they'd write down um, Polly, the name of the dog. And you'd think... <laughs> Exactly. And that had nothing to do with it, with the registered name. So you spend time with that. Catalogues were done on a Ronio machine, and then you walked around the table at um, assembling them. And this was, believe me, we were <laughs> up to, exact, I, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> this is, uh, so it was, it, that's, I, I, I spent an awful lot of time organizing shows and um, and then with the lab, I, I was show director for, so up until about, what, five, six years ago? Wow. Oh, do you miss it? Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> I think no wins. <laughs> but you wouldn't have given it up, though. No. Uh, no, no. It was time. It's time. You you know, yeah. younger people and all the rest of it and and new ideas and but there are not that many people who want to get into it. This is yeah. the sad part. It's part of the problem we have right now. Yeah, there's no up-and-comers. You, you, you go to kennel clubs, and the kennel clubs are all older people that are involved. Totally. And they, and they yes. get people that – I think it's because it's not instant gratification to them. There's so much more for them to do now and information online, and it's just, it's just too much for them. So they – Unless they can come in and succeed right away, they don't really want to do it. So. Absolutely right. Yeah. Um, have you taken on any? I know you said you mentored. You're mentoring someone right now. Have you done that a lot? You mentored a lot of people. No, no, because really, this is a new. This is like a new bunch or group of younger people who are, are getting into to judging, um, and they should have advanced more during the pandemic, to be honest with you, because there was the time and what have you, but. Uh, it's not easy organizing. Uh, and somehow they, here they were averse to having tests online as opposed to being vigilated, you know. I don't know why, but uh, so there wasn't as much advancement in that as there should have been, but we're still working towards it, we're still working towards it. But I enjoy doing that, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's what and that the only thing I suggest is that as soon as they say, you know, I'm not the only mentor, you need to go to other people, other judges, other breeders of that particular breed and get their opinion too. You're getting mine as an all-breed judge here, not as a specialist. So do branch out and get, to, and I can give them advice that maybe who they could go to to get the, the best advice from. So... Um, I think that's important too, that you don't pretend that you know it all again. <laughs> mm -hmm. When you're pointers, like I, I associate you with pointers. So over the years, have you noticed a change in the in the the style of pointers you see in the ring now? A little bit. They're a little more fancy now, if that's the right word. They're a bit more stylish. I think they're going through a very good stage at the moment. There's been sort of ups and downs and ups. And there's some very good, serious breeders in the States, in Canada, a couple, yes. And, of course, New Zealand and Australia, oh, yeah. where there are some outstanding breeders who they seem to stamp out quality after, you know, upon quality. And it's exciting. It is. I wish I was younger and I could get another one. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could do it. I know you could. Mm -hmm. um how about what about any advice for 
upcoming breeders, the one that want to get involved in the sport of dogs. Here, do you mean? Yeah. Um, yes, we've got some we've got some good breeders here of various breeds. Um, pointers being one of them. Mm. Breeds change in popularity here. You know, when I first arrived, it was Rottweilers. There were a hundred Rottweilers in the show minimum, and then Labs came up and Goldens, Akitas, American Akitas. Um, at the moment, uh, Border Collies, and there's some serious uh, Border Collie enthusiasts, and. Still goldens, they stay up there all the time. But that, of course, is very much the American type of golden. It's not the what they would consider the FCI type of golden or, mm. you know, UK. Yeah, we get, a lot, um, we get a lot of English up here. So, I yeah, I've seen a couple, and it's it's not easy to judge when you've got the two types in the ring. <laughs> I know I've watched I've watched judges walk in, and and you know they'll have a. Quite the variety, especially up here, and you can see them. They 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 they, they are a little, little little overwhelmed because they may have not, had not seen those the English style as much as they'd like to. But that's what I grew yeah. up with. So, yeah. Well, so did I, basically. Um, what other breed? Frenchies, of course. Through went through a tremendous Frenchies and and bulldogs. We had lots of them, and that seems to have gone going down again. So. And so there have been breeders of all those breeds, Bulldogs, Frenchies, Goldens, um, Border Collies, Akitas. So there, it's stages. Yeah, I find it goes, it goes in waves here in, in Canada as well, the, the, how popular breeds get. I hate to say it, sometimes it falls into movies or a popular dog winning and it just the breed tends to take off. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to... Meet the twenty-year-old Dennis. Is there any advice you should give her? Oh gosh, so much. Will, how long have you got? <laughs> That's not okay, Dennis. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, I would have liked, loved to have started earlier in in dogs, but uh, it wasn't that easy back then. And with at that stage, too many young children um, in Jamaica, so it was difficult there to. I know I loved it. Don't get me wrong. Those children, 10 years. How many children do you have, Dennis? I beg your pardon. How many, how many children do you have? Four. Four. Okay, I wasn't sure. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I have, <laughs> I have four sons. Okay. Um, and uh, I did have a stepdaughter, but she very sadly was in a car accident. Oh, so. That. Um, thirty years ago now. Wow. So, um. But I have four sons and seven grandchildren, and it, it, when everybody's together, it's a lot of people in the house. <laughs> I got you off talk, uh, topic. I'm sorry. Go back to the advice. <laughs> um, no, I've, had, I've I've lived a lot. I must say, I, you do learn from your mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, I hope, or most of them. And um, no, I, I I can't think of any one piece of advice I'd I'd give that person. I don't know. No. There's no point in saying save money, is there? <laughs> no. No. Okay, uh, one last question for you then. What if you had if you had a, a chance to have dinner with a dog show personality, past or present, who would you have liked to spend time with again? Well, I can think of a lot of people. Skip Sandbridge comes to mind. Oh yes. I loved him, loved him dearly. I loved him. He was interesting. He had a sense of humor, par excellence. Um, Bobby James, the British judge, he I could I could sit and talk to him for a week, a month probably. There are so many people, Will. <laughs> there are, I know. Nigel Aubrey Jones. Yeah. Can I have a whole table full of people? Sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, oh, I could keep going, but. Those are some that come to mind immediately. Yeah, that would be quite the table, yeah. wouldn't it? Well, we all miss Skip. We all miss them all, but Skip is yes. so, Skip oh, Skip. so recent. He was very <laughs> special. He yeah. came down to judge here, I would say at least three, if not four times. And he was one of my favorites to come. Yeah. 
I always look yeah. forward to seeing him. He always had something to say either about my hockey team or about something else I was doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he sorely missed. Yeah, for sure. Very much so. Okay, well, I won't keep you any longer, Dennis. I appreciate your time. It was good to see you, and I can't wait to see you again. I don't know when we will. Oh, you said you might be in Canada, so. Maybe next year, yes. If you're where, where in Canada. You I'm met- not saying yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, it's good. Always good to see you. All right, Dennis. Thank you so much. Keep well. Have, say hi to your son. I will for sure. Hey. And thank you for for looking after no, no, him no. when he came down there that time. Okay. <laughs> Kept all the worries. He, he just he just actually I'm off topic again. He just directed his first short film. Oh wow! Yeah. So yeah. So that's where that's where he's gone off to now. He's in, he's he wants to get into the the movie industry. So. Oh, well, all the very best with that. Congratulations. Oh, off topic again, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All no, right, no, no. You have a great day. It was great to see you. And you. Bye, Will. Thanks, Dennis. It was great to catch up with you. You look great. If you like what we're doing here, make sure you press the like, share, and subscribe button. If you want to find out what's happening in Will's world, go to willalexander.net. Or if you need to send me a message, you can send it to dogshowtips at gmail.com. And don't forget about the Dog Show Drive on podcast providers everywhere, every Thursday with myself and Wayne Kavanaugh. Until then, guys, stay safe out there.